In this presentation, we will record a transaction related to paying payroll taxes. In other words, within our practice problem, we're going to say that payroll has been processed for the month of January. We withheld taxes on that payroll and we have our employer payroll taxes. We're imagining the process is being helped by a third party to help us process the payroll, such as an ADP or a paychex. Now we're going to be paying off those payroll taxes. It's time to engage with Sage. 50 cloud accounting here we are in our get great guitars file we're currently in the customer and sales section we're going to go on down to the employee and payroll section so note that in our practice problem we're not actually processing the payroll through sage we talked about the options to do so it typically would be an add-on type of feature and we want to keep this uh, so that uh, we don't have to pay for the add-on features if you wanted to follow through with it however we are assuming in our practice problem that we have payroll processed and it's going to be helped to do so with like a third party like a paychecks or an ADP. And then we took their report, entered that into our system. So if we go then to our, our uh, reports here, this is going to be like a really kind of simple report that you could think about what you would get from an ADP or a paychecks. And we have our two employees and you'll recall last time that we took this report, we entered this into our system. The idea being that uh, we want ADP or paychecks to be able to provide the detailed information, which is going to include the gross pay and the withholdings for every check for every employee on a check by check basis, as well as a year to date basis. What we want in our system for financial reporting purposes is we need the, the, the financial statements to be right, which you could enter into our system with just basically you know, one journal entry, kind of assuming as if you had one giant employee that was making all the payroll so that the financial statement balances would be right so that we can have our financial statements correct and then uh, go to ADP or paychecks or whatever third party payroll processor we're using for the more detailed information check by checks, uh, employee by employee. However way you want to look at it, whether it be run through Sage or, or whether it be done by a third party, we are going to have to take these withholdings. So these withholdings because the government, the government makes us. So we're gonna to have to take these out. The federal income tax withholdings, uh, which include the social security, Medicare income. This is gonna be what's been taken out of the employee uh, checks here. And so, and we had to put them into a payable account. So we say we, we're gonna owe those. This is, this is the amount that was earned by our two employees, Adam and Erica. Like in theory, again, this is in economic terms, this is, you know, obviously changes the negotiation, but if you're, this is what in theory has been earned by them and we took from them because we're forced to for the federal taxes and that's what now is in the payable account. Then we had to pay over and above our employer taxes of the 307 and uh, the 77, which is the uh, 384. So that means we owe to the Fed at this point uh, this and this which is the 1598, which should be reflected in a payable account in our system. Now note that uh, same kind of issue with the payable account for the, for the, for the payroll payable as with the sales tax. It's, it, there's a question as terms of how often do you have to pay it? In other words, the more employees you have, same kind of thing, uh, the more money that's gonna be going through the system, the more likely the, the IRS is gonna say, I want my money sooner, right? I want my money sooner. But, and also if you have different payroll periods, we're gonna be paying monthly here. If you pay weekly, then you may have to, you may have to make you know, payments more often to, to the government. Uh, if you pay uh, semi-monthly or, or bi-weekly, then again, you'll have to see what the terms are depending on how much your payroll is and uh, how often you have to pay. We're gonna say here that we, may, we pay payroll monthly, so we've only made had one payroll for January, and now we're gonna have to pay it sometime in the end of February. So that's just going to be how our system is going to work. So we've run payroll for January. We haven't run payroll for February yet. We have a payable now because we withheld money and we have our payable. And now we owe that to the government. And we're only processing the federal government. If you had a state government, that'll change state to state. The federal government uh, has breaks the money that they take for payroll taxes into these categories of Social Security, Medicare, and the federal uh, income tax. So that's what we have now. Let's take a look at our reports then or financial statement. Let's go to the reports drop down and go on down to the uh, financial statements over here and then open up the old balance sheet. So let's open up the old balance sheet as of February. So we wanna take a look at the month of February, February, and then go down to the liabilities. So there's what we owe. So there's the 1598. 
Now that's all for, Jan for, for the month of January because we haven't run February uh, payroll yet and we only uh, do the payroll once a uh, month in, in our system here. We only, we only pay people once a month. Our employees would like to get paid more often. We've been discussing it with them, whether we should pay them bi-week. Anyway, so we've got the 1598, so we're gonna be paying that to them now. We're just gonna write a check and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna write a check to the, to the Fed on it. So let's go back over. I'm gonna go back to the first tab here. So I'm gonna write checks to, to do this. I'm actually gonna write uh, three checks just so you can see. I'm gonna go back up to the vendor and purchases section. So you can see kind of the breakout. So I'm gonna write a check for Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax, even though it's all going to the same place. In essence, it's going to the IRS, just so you can see that breakout for the three components or types of taxes. So I'm gonna to go to the write check. It's also gonna help us with our bank reconciliation because I wanna have some more items for the bank rec. So we're gonna to go to the new check. So we're gonna be writing a new check. We're gonna add a new vendor up top. So I'm gonna say a, a new vendor. So let's put a new vendor here because we, uh, we haven't written any, any checks for the payroll as of yet. And then let's put the ID is gonna be, just, I'll just put the IRS here, IRS. And then it's gonna be uh, the name. I'll put the full name here, Internal Revenue Service. You have to say it with like a, a menacing voice because they're kind of scary. So that's gonna be that and then the expense account is going to be we'll pay we'll pick up the uh actually the liability account here so i'm going to go back up top i'm looking in the liability accounts federal payroll tax payable that's the one we want that's going to be the default and then that looks good so i'm going to save that and then close this back up so close this back up <clears throat> and then we're going to put in the iid the irs and then i'm going to tab through this here and number, I'll just put a number up top for our practice problem. And then I'm gonna make this on the 29th. And then the dollar amount is gonna be, I'm gonna break this out again. I'm gonna say, okay, social security, it's gonna be the employee portion and the employer portion. So that comes out to the 614, uh, the 614, 614, 614, 614, 614, 614. So I'm gonna put that 614 here. And there we have, this is going to be the Social Security payroll tax. And the other side is going to be going to this here. So the split is going to the federal taxes payable. So there is that. So we're going to say that looks good. Let's save it. So we're going to save that. And let's do it again. We're going to make another one to the IRS. And it's going to be for, uh, let's make... Uh, this uh, 7 29th and then let's make this for the Medicare portion so that's going to include the Medicare that we took from the employees because they, they made us and then our portion that we had to match the 154 the 154 so that's going to be the amount here the 154 154 and this is going to be Medicare Medicare payroll tax so that's gonna decrease the, the account. I have the checking account, right? Yeah, so it's going out of the right account and the other side's gonna be decreasing the payable. So let's do one more. So we're gonna say one more and this is gonna be going to the IRS as well. And this is gonna be for uh, the amount of just the federal income tax. Now this is only the employee portion. This isn't our tax we have to pay because we have to pay federal income tax too as the company. But this is what's, what they have to pay for the employee federal income tax. And there's no matching on our side for their federal income tax. We pay our federal income tax on, the in, on our net income. So that's going to be the 830. So that's going to be 830, 830. And this is going to be the FIT, federal income tax, payroll tax. And that's going to be that. That looks good. Let's save it. Let's go ahead and save that. And then let's close this back out. Gonna close this back out. We're gonna go back on over to our balance sheet and see what happens on, well, let's see what's going on over there on the balance sheet. And then if we go down, we're gonna say that uh, the federal taxes has disappeared because we paid them now. So if we want to see that and drill down on it, we can go to the little cog up top. And I'm gonna say, hey, I'd like to see the zero numbers so I can use the zoom feature. So I wanna see the zero numbers and say, okay. And then we're going to go back up and you're going to see that now we have the federal taxes pay the one in the assets section up here. We have the federal taxes payable here. I'm going to double click on that zero. 
And so there we have it. So we have our three checks that we paid off. Now, if I open this up and just take a look at it for January and February for the two month time period and then say, okay. So now we have the, the Adam and Erica. So, right, this is the, the amount we took from Adam. This is the amount we took from Erica for their payroll in January. This is our portion that we had to pay, that we had to uh, incur, that increased the liability. And then this is our payment. So we paid them off and we paid them off grouping them together by Social Security, Medicare, and FIT federal income tax. Now bringing the balance back down to zero. And then we're gonna, we haven't processed payroll for February yet. So when we process payroll for February, we will once again have a liability for our two employees and our portion of the federal payroll taxes which we will then pay to the government in uh, March. But that'll be beyond our problem, so we won't get to see that part. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.